Hello everyone. This is another chatting with Coach Tina session. Okay, there we go. For a minute there, I thought the video had gone off. So anyways, I'm doing another chatting with Coach Tina session. And today's topic is five things, okay? Five things that happen. No, actually it's four. I just thought about it. Four things that happens when you are used as transitional supply with a narcissist, okay? So when you are in a so-called relationship with an individual who has narcissistic brokenness, there are various stages that the relationship goes through, okay? And I've already talked about these stages quite a bit. So when you are in the entering a relationship phase, this is where the love bombing occurs, right? You got the poems, you got songs, short stories written about you. You might even have a book literally written about you and performed. You've got these exquisite dinners, you've got hotel stays, excessive admiration, and you are basically his trophy that's on a stand for everyone else to see, right? So this could last maybe, it could be up to a couple of years, literally, believe it or not, before the phase comes in where you start being devalued, okay? And that happens in the problems and unhealthy pattern of behaviors phase, okay? And so sometimes what happens is when you are in a relationship with someone that has narcissistic brokenness, you can end up in a situation where it is love bombing and devaluing, love bombing and devaluing, love bombing and devaluing. So you can also have that and then finally is discard at the end, right? There is no rhyme or reason as to whether your cycle is going to go straight through, whether you're going to have love bombing, devaluing, love bombing, devaluing, and then discard, or if it's going to go a whole nother pattern. There's no rhyme or reason as to whether this individual will choose to switch it up a little bit, okay? So let's talk about being transitional supply. When you are in a uh, position of being transitional supply, what happens is none of this is going on, okay? There are not a straight through cycle or the love bombing, uh, devaluing, and then discard. Those cycles, you don't have that going on in the same manner, okay? You are not given the full love bombing treatment. That's what ends up happening when you are transitional supply. You are not given the same treatment that everybody else has gotten, okay? When it's the regular type of relationship, that's what I'm uh, trying to say, okay? It's like having a cake that's half baked. Who wants a cake that's half baked? No one wants a cake that's half done, right? But that's what happens when you are in the situation of being love bombed and you are transitional supply, okay? It's something quick, okay? And you might think that, okay, well, if that's quick, that's good, it's less damage. Not really. <laughs> Not necessarily, okay? The relationship moves on. It moves from love bombing that being really quick, to devalue and discard. And I mean, it's really fast. And it's so fast. It happens so fast that you literally think that you have whiplash, okay? That's how fast that the love bombing like that and you're moving on to devaluing and discard. I mean, literally just like that, okay? And so another thing about being transitional supply with the narcissist is that it's um the whole setup of it is just kind of different okay so when you think about transition let's think about this the word transition that definition that means it's the process of going through emotionally mentally physically spiritually socially and financially of going from one situation slash relationship slash environment to another that's what transitions is right so you think about it, you got kindergartners, they have graduations, kindergartners transition over to first grade, right? You got Sunday school students, they transition to a higher grade, right? 
And then think about it. You transition from one job to another, right? Okay. And then the marital status, you might transition from being single to being married, from being married to being divorced. Okay. From being in a small, a smaller type of setting for your small group at church to a larger small group, right? You transition from one church to another. So we got all of these different type of transitions going on, right? Okay. So, and then you can also transition. Another thing could be from like having no friends to having several, okay? But everything that we do in life involves these transitions. So in essence, when you're in a relationship that's transitional, okay, where well you're playing the role, I guess I would say, of transitional supply, the goal of that relationship is to for the person who possesses narcissistic brokenness and is going through a major life transition for you to be a boost, so to speak. And I've talked about it before. Basically, you're like giving them a charge. Okay, you think about the Energizer Bunny and just as you charge that bunny up just to give a little boost to keep going. That's the focus of the transitional. Okay, that's the focus, that's the goal, and that is the role of transitional supply to give that person a boost while they're going through whatever transition they're going through in life, okay? So think about it like this. Say, for instance, you're at Walmart, okay? And while you're in there, your phone starts flashing. You know that your phone is going to possibly shut down any minute, okay? So you run over to the electronics department and you ask them if you could plug up your phone to get a little juice, okay? You go ahead and plug it up and then that way you're good to go until you get home because you got another hour before you get home. You don't need to have this done. This is something that you desire, right? Because that way you want to have the option of being able to possibly make a call on your way home or have someone to call you or just to have that safety of knowing your phone is charged in case there's emergency with your car. But it's not a necessity, it's an option, okay? So when you think about it, this option though, having that option and knowing that you can do that, it kind of keeps you content, right? Because you know, need be, I can pull out my phone and I got a little bit of juice left, right? So a person with narcissistic brokenness becomes so dependent upon having supply that they don't want to go without, they don't want to have it as an option for that relationship, <laughs> to go without that relationship. They don't want that option, okay? During whatever transitions they're going through. They don't want an option though that they're with somebody. That's like a no-no, okay? So they, when they pick someone for transitional supply, it's usually someone that gives them the perfect temporary situation, okay? until they figure out who they want long-term. You see what I'm saying? So for example, say for instance, if uh, he has the sudden death of his wife, right? And then he's left with two children to raise on his own, okay? Now, you might have two children, and so he figures, wow, this is the perfect house setup situation. My kids have playmates, and you are also serving as my transitional supply, right? Or you think about it, if his child has passed, he meets you and you have a child of the same sex. Okay, this is going to serve as my transitional supply. And I know you might think, Mal, this is pretty cruel. This is literally what's done where people unfortunately uh, become objectified instead of them being human beings who have feelings, who have connections, and whose uh, emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical state should not be played with like we're playing with toys, okay? And so what happens is that, uh, the thing about this is that you don't have a clue. You have no clue that this is what he's planning on doing, that you are only going to be in this relationship for so long, right? And uh, it could be three months, it could be seven months, it could be one year, it could be two years, but it is not going to be the length of time 
that he would have spent and invested in a longer term relationship. But like I said, you have no clue, okay? It has nothing to do with you not being enough. That's the other thing, okay? Because what it is, he's looking for a permanent fit, but you would think, well, I wasn't good enough. It don't matter what you were. He was going through a transition. He wanted a boost, and you happen to be there with the perfect setup for his situation. It's not about you not being enough. It's all about his plans and his brokenness and a reflection on him. A lot of times we think because somebody else is doing something, it's all about what we did. And a lot of the times it's about that other person as far as why they choose to do what they choose to do to you, okay? We cannot change or fix someone else's brokenness. And we gotta remember that because that is the Holy Spirit's job, not ours. So the first thing that happens when you are used as transitional supply with a narcissist, you are tempted with food. Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness, and I'm reading from Matthew 4, to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So Jesus was tempted right after coming off of his fast. He's tempted in the wilderness. And the person that you with, that you are serving as transitional supply for, right? Who has narcissistic brokenness. He is tempting you with food. And he's tempting you, you know, you want to go out with, to dinner? We can go head over here to this restaurant, okay? And you go out to dinner, either he's not putting that much effort into it, he might only spend a little bit of money on you, or he might do it all up. Either way it go, nine times out of ten, if you are serving as transitional supply, the bare minimum you're going to get is a meal, point blank, Okay? And that's it. That was your love bombing, getting a meal. Okay, there's no poems, no songs, no, you know, melody and charades and serenading, no, none of that. The dinner was it. Okay, number two, you're tempted with your body as a testing point with God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you. On their hands, they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, again, it's written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Now, when I say for number two, that you're tempted with your body as a testing point with God, I don't need to go into any explanation here. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. You've already set standards for yourself as a godly woman. And the next thing you know, you are going against those standards and you are convinced to go there because he's making it a trusting issue. Well, do you trust God that he's going to do that just like the devil did with Jesus in the wilderness? Do you trust God that he's going to forgive you? He says this in his word. And the next thing you know, he is quoting scripture to you about trusting God. This is not a situation of trusting God. What he is doing is trying to get you to test God. In Romans 6 and 1, and this is the New Living Translation, it says, Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show more and more of his wonderful grace? So do we just go out and sin just because we know that God is going to forgive us? I don't think so. That's a lie. From the pit, we know that. Which brings us to number three, the third thing that happens when you're used as transitional supply with a narcissist. You're tempted with worldly possessions. Okay, and then once again, we're in Matthew 4, the eighth chapter, the eighth verse rather says, Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I'll give you. If you will just fall down and worship me. 
Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. In your situation, you are shown all the things he's saying he's going to buy you, okay? You, he shows you houses, cars, boats, motorcycles, vacation homes, and even talking about all of the babies you're going to have, okay? He keeps talking about them, has shown you all these things, but as time is progressing in this small length of time, you see that all of that talk, nothing has come to fruition, right? And you, you see in signs that something is probably off with this situation, okay? The shiny new objects that are promised seem to outweigh your concerns, right? And you keep questioning him like, well, when is this going to happen? Baby, when are we going to move into the house? When are we going to do this? And when are we going to buy the cars? When are we going to go on vacation? Baby, it'll be soon. You know, we're going to start our family up. You got all these promises going on. Nothing has been delivered, right? He keeps saying, okay, um, you know what? As soon as my baby mama paid me the money back that she was supposed to have paid me for child support. Um, as soon as this divorce is over, we're going to get there, okay? Uh, as soon as I finish grieving my brother or my child, we're going to get there. But you find out, you figure out like something is still not adding up because you keep being pushed off. But because they're going through this transition period, you also feel, you know what? I should really take it easy on him because I know he's going through. You don't realize that that transition period is actually the perfect excuse for him. And you don't know that that is really just being used for the sake of like, I'm not going to do it. But you have no clue of this, right? Okay, but him saying as soon as blah, 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 that becomes his daily song. Which brings us to number four. Boom. Up and out of nowhere, he leaves. So maybe you open door number one. If you open door number one, he left. He never devalued and discarded you the normal way. Okay? And remember, this is for a transitional supply. This is when you function as transitional supply. Or if you open door number two, what happened when you open door number two, then he kept devaluing, 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 and then discarded you. Okay? He devalued, he devalued you to the point that either you left or <laughs> to the point that you put him out if you had your own place. So if you left, that means you left because you moved in with him. Okay? So it's going to be one of the two. Either he's just going to up and leave or it's going to be door number two you open where you would devalue, devalue, devalue. He's sabotaging the situation, talking about every, criticizing and judging every single thing that you do till you get sick of it and leave or you get sick of it and put him out. And if it's at that point, if he does it with door number two, if that's the one you're opening, that's because he's found a new supply. He, go, he went to the store and bought another pack of double A Duracell Energizer batteries, either one of them, Duracell or Energizer. He bought a double pack of batteries, okay? And he's ready to try that out, to try that, uh, those particular batteries out, so to speak, okay? And so at the same time, you are probably suffering from PTSD at this point. And you would think, well, if it didn't go that long, why would I be suffering from PTSD? Because it's like a whiplash. You had all of these promises that never came to be. It never came to fruition. And you just kept holding on and kept holding on and kept holding on and making up excuses because he was going through a major life transition. And so it seemed to have made sense. You see what I'm saying? So that's why it's like a whiplash and a PTSD situation right along with it. But when it comes to like when him devaluing you, you think about Ephesians 4.29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what's helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And like I said, that was Ephesians 4 and 29. So when you're with someone in narcissistic that has narcissistic brokenness, right? And they're in that devaluing stage. 
unwholesome talk, <laughs> that's taken to a whole nother level. And if you transitional, that's a whole nother level. Because once they done found somebody, they're like, I'm, I'm gone, I'm out of here, right? Remember, it's not the regular cycle of all the other relationships. When you're a transitional supply, it's usually no more than two years and they're gone. A lot of them, it's four months and boom, they peace out before you can even turn your head good, right? You're hoping that you can get some closure, right? Because when they leave, there's so many unanswered questions. You keep calling them, you keep emailing them, you keep texting them, you keep showing up at his house because you're trying to get closure, right? And you almost at the point of stalking him because that's left like some type of crazy feeling in you. Like, well, what happened? Like I said, it's like whiplash. You see what I'm saying? All these promises and baby, we're going to do this. We're going to get this house. We're going to have these kids. We're going to uh, get these cars. We're going to go on vacation. None of that stuff happened. You left with whiplash and then you are almost stalking him yourself just to get closure. You want to find out what happened. What did you do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. You were only transitional supply. So what do you do? You go out on social media, right? And you see him with his new woman. She got everything that he promised you, right? She's pregnant in no time. They've gone on vacations. They bought cars and motorcycles and boats. And they got this big old house that he didn't pay cash for, okay? I mean, way, way up there. They got everything. And then you feel cheated. You feel cheated. You feel betrayed. You're just like, I got to right this wrong. So you still keep trying to reach out. There is no righting the wrong. And it's over. And when you don't tell yourself what ends up happening is you will start throwing yourself at him. Because you did not have the closure of the regular, so to speak. Okay. Think about a regular. I don't even know. I don't even know if I like the sounds of that, but of a regular relationship with someone that's narcissistic, you didn't have that regular relationship. So whereas everybody's talking about, we did, he did this, then he did that, and then he did this, and then he did that. No, yours is like, boom, and you whiplash. When you are transitional supply, it's a whiplash situation with them. And so you keep trying to chase them to get closure, but you don't know that the best thing you can do is just walk away. There is no closure, okay? Closure for you is praising and thanking God that you're still halfway in your right mind and trying to heal and move on. That's closure for you, okay? Because you probably think, well, what do I do now? Because you were promised all these things that you never received, okay? But guess what? You got to make up in your mind. You can't change what happened. You can't change what he did to you. You can't change the fact that you gave in to temptation, right? You got to take responsibility for the part that you played. And then you got to also realize that you have a choice to stay where you are and keep constantly trying to reach him and stalking him on social media and trying to get closure or your closure is going, okay, I can't change what happened. I got a choice. I can move forward or I can remain. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's the only two options that you have, right? So if you remain, you just end up being miserable. You can be remaining in that state till Jesus comes, literally trying to have closure because it's not going to happen. And unfortunately, he doesn't care. So what happens is that the ball is in your court. The first thing you have to do with any type of narcissistic relationship and this transitional supply function is the same, no contact. You cannot have contact with a person that has abused you with a regular type of contact situation. You can't, okay? At least two years with no relationship at all. And I know some of you guys are like, oh, I'm gonna be lonely, I'm doing this, my friends are doing that, my friends are doing this. If you don't, what happens is you're gonna go right back. The next relationship, every relationship you're gonna go in is gonna be toxic because you've not got a chance to heal because what has happened is that not only do you probably have PTSD, you have also uh, suffered narcissistic abuse. So you've got to heal from two things. Then you got to heal from like what happened as a regular normal relationship type of thing, even though nothing about it was normal, but you still loved that individual. So you got those three things you're dealing, from, dealing with. Then if you got kids, you've got their trauma and all their drama to deal with. So the last thing you want to do is, oh, let me go. <laughs> 
cover this up and sweep it under the rug, all my trauma, with another man. It's only going to be more drama. I promise you that. It's going to be more drama. So my suggestion would be at least two years in no type of romantic relationship. You got to be able to know who you are again. And you got to be able to know that you are okay just being with you. Loving, respecting, honoring, and 100% accepting yourself. When you're at that point and you know everything that you like to do and all of that, and you're content with that and don't have to be with somebody, that's how you know you're ready. That God is like, okay, daughter, you, you ready to go out and start looking again. Or having that man, not so much as looking again, but knowing you're ready. And letting the Lord, and the Holy Spirit guide you into that relationship. Not going out and getting yourself in more trouble. You want to do it his way. And what does his way stand for? Healing first. Grounding yourself in your identity in Christ. The S stands for Getting that self-worth, and that self-worth comes from your identity in Christ, right? You know you're worthy because you're grounded in your identity. He calls us chosen, redeemed, right? The righteousness of God in Christ, right? We're the daughter of the king. We're a child of God. We are royal priesthood. Once you know that, you say, boom, bam, I got to protect my value, my worth at all costs, okay? And then you got the W with affirmations and yielding so when we do it his way okay instead of like the burger king have it your way baby we're doing it his way that's when we receive the blessing that's when we receive the healing that's when we're ready to move forward and hopefully know what to do when we encounter this situation again remember you're already enough okay you don't have to have closure in order to prove that you're enough, okay? You gotta move forward without it. Waiting on closure means you're waiting to heal and you can be waiting till Jesus come for that to happen. Grab your keys to the kingdom and let's get started. Get your inheritance. Until next time, God bless.